So we just looked at additive identity. If we do a really fast example, it'll be a little bit silly, but we'll do it very quickly. So we're going to add these two matrices. So of course, addition, you need the exact same dimension. So I want to add the zero matrix to this. And it's a little trivial to do this. Uh, so 3 plus 0, 3, 5, 0, 1. So that's the additive identity in action. Not very exciting. You just need to make sure your dimensions match up. And this uh, matrix won't change anything. All right, now we're going to switch to the multiplicative identity. So let's go back to real numbers. So when we were dealing just in real numbers, x times what number it will always equal x? One. 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 All right. So you know your arithmetic. That's good. x times 1 is 1. So there is a matrix that acts like 1. So in matrices, So we'll switch to, uh, we'll use M as the matrix. No, I think I was using A's and B's. Was I using? Yeah, I was using A's and B's. So let's keep going with that. So we have, if A is an M by N matrix, what dimension would I have to multiply by for this to actually uh, be a valid product? So let's say there's a matrix here. I'm going to call it I for identity. Which dimension, row or column, has to be a certain value? So this will be blank by blank. Which dimension needs to match? The first one. So our first dimension. So our inner dimensions have to match. All right. <clears throat> if I want to get the same matrix back out, just like the multiplicative identity above, I, want, I started with x, and I want to get x at the end. I want to change it. So I want an m by n matrix at the end. What does the outer dimension have to be? This is a little more tricky. I think we only looked at dimensions near the very end of the last lecture. So I'll scroll back to that. Did a dimensional. So this is what we looked at with dimensions. When we multiply two matrices, your inner dimensions must match. And remember, your outer dimensions were uh, dictated by the outer dimensions right there. So the number of columns in your product is the number of columns in your second matrix. So with that knowledge, let's go back. So our inner dimensions match. Now my outer dimension needs to be n. That means I need an n by n matrix to multiply by. Now, <clears throat> what if I switch orders? I want to multiply. So this is what we call a right identity. So that's the right identity. And now we'll look at the left identity. So I want to multiply so I get the exact same matrix at the end. And I'm going to, again, use the letter i. What dimensions does this matrix i have to have? So let's work out. There's two dimensions I need. So first of all, I need my inner dimensions to match. So this dimension here needs to be m, or else I won't be allowed to multiply. What does the first dimension need to be? M. The first one needs to be m because I want my product to have m uh, rows. <coughs> so 
So it's a little bit strange. The left identity may have different dimensions than the right identity. The only time the left and the right identity will have the same dimensions is if you started out with a square matrix. So if M and N were the same number. That's the only time the identity would work on both sides. All right, so what is the identity? The identity is always a square matrix. The dimension is dictated by what you're multiplying it uh, by. So we just looked at the two possibilities. It's either the number of rows or columns on your matrix you're multiplying by. It just depends on the order that you're multiplying. And it's always going to look like, I'll just use n right here. It's always going to look just like this. It will have ones running down the diagonal. I don't know exactly how many ones, whatever the value of n is. It'll have n ones going down there. It'll have zeros everywhere else. So it's kind of annoying to write a bunch of zeros everywhere. And we have a fix for that. The way we write this is we write ones down the diagonal. And you just put really big zeros everywhere else. So you just put big zeros to fill up all that extra space with zeros. So again, we have n rows, uh, n rows and n columns. All right, there's the identity matrix. So let's do a fast example. So here's the matrix A. I want you to write the left and the right identity So there's going to be two different identities because A is not square. So I'll call them uh, identity 1. Maybe we'll go identity L for the left identity. And I want to know what is the right identity. So let's get the dimensions correct. If I'm going to multiply on the left side, if I'm going to multiply A on the left side, what dimensions do I have to have? So A is three rows, two columns. What dimensions does a left identity have to have? What's that? No, so identity is always square. So it's either two by two or three by three. One of the one of the matrices will be two by two, and the other one will be three by three. It's going to be three by three. So this one has to be three by three because we need our inner dimensions to be the same right there. So in this case, we'll go three by three. So the left identity is going to be a three by three. So there'll be three rows, three columns. There's not too many zeros to write out, so you can write out all zeros like this. Or you could use the big zero to mean that there's zeros everywhere else off of the uh, diagonal. I'm going to leave it with all little zeros in. All right, now we're going to look at the right identity. So just looking at the dimensions. 3 by 2, the right identity needs to match the inner dimension. So this identity is 2 by 2. So there's the right identity. And let's just do the uh, first one to check. So we'll multiply the left identity by A. And remember, 
when you're multiplying, make sure you write out your uh, rows and columns nicely. And I'm going to draw in those separators that we were using before. So go ahead and perform this multiplication. It should be pretty quick. There's a whole lot of zeros, so there's really not too much multiplying going on. It's mostly multiplying by zeros. So that's how multiplying by the identity works. So two by two, multiplying on the other side will be in a very similar way. So the next thing we're going to look at is, call, is the inverse of a matrix. So look at the multiplicative inverse. So again, we'll start in real numbers. Does anybody remember multiplicative inverse, what that means? Reciprocal? You've heard of that. So the multiplicative inverse is the number you multiply x by to get the identity, to get 1. So what would I multiply x by to get 1? 1 over x. 1 over x. There is one number that this doesn't work for. What number could you not multiply something else and get 1? Zero. Zero. So the only number this doesn't work for is 0. So it works anytime x is not 0. All right. We have multiplicative inverses in matrices. Another way to write x uh, reciprocal is x to the negative first power. So you've seen that too. That just means 1 over x, or the multiplicative inverse of x. So we're going to use the same notation. We're going to write a inverse. And what is 1? What's the equivalent of 1 in matrices? It will be the identity matrix. It's the matrix you can multiply by and not change anything. And all right, when we look for inverses, we only are going to be concerned with square matrices. So there are no inverses for non-square matrices. So right away, we get to fix the dimensions to be a square. And also, not all square matrices have inverses. So for example, the square matrix filled up with zeros. There's no way to multiply that by something and not get a zero matrix out. There are lots of other matrices that don't have inverses that are square. Uh, but we will look at the process of how to find an inverse. Actually, let's, we'll do a check first, and then I'll show you how to find them. So our first matrix will be 3, 1, 2, 1. And the second matrix, 1, negative 1, minus 2, 3. 
So check that these two matrices are inverses. What should I get if I multiply these two together? I get the identity matrix. What dimension will this matrix have to be? Two by two. Two by two. So whenever you multiply square matrices, your dimensions stay the same. All right, so go ahead. I don't know that this necessarily is equal yet. We're about to check this. So multiply these two matrices together and tell me what you get. So you should have gotten the two by two identity matrix. So we can write this as I two by two. So that's the two by two identity matrix. It's got ones in the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. Inverses work in either order. So I could swap the order and multiply these. And I should get the same thing. So you got three minus two, one minus one, minus six plus six, minus two plus three. And if you find yourself writing things too close together, you can always put a little grid inside your matrix to keep things separated. So I recommend instead of just coming back and erasing everything, just put a little grid inside your matrix so you can keep it straight. All right, any questions on those two products right there? So now we're going to look at how do you find this matrix? How do you find the inverse? <coughs> So there is an easy way, a sort of easy way to detect if a matrix is going to have an inverse and use the determinant, which we'll do in, the, I think, the next chapter or the next section. But right now, I'll just give you matrices that have inverses. So we don't have to worry about will it have it or not. So what you do, inverse for an n by n matrix. So what you do is you create this double wide matrix where the first, the left part will be A and the right part will be the identity. And then you do row operations. So a bunch of row operations, the exact three row operations you've used before. And what you are going to do the exact same process you did before I didn't call it this, but on the left side, you're going to get the identity matrix, which is once down the diagonal, zeros elsewhere. So it's the exact process you did before. And whatever result you get on the right side, as long as you do this correctly, will be A inverse. So that matrix that results on the right will be A inverse. All right, so there's the process. And now we're going to go ahead and do this for the matrix we just looked at. So given the same matrix, 3, 1, 2, 1. Um, we're not going to get too algebraic here, but uh, inverses are unique. So if you find an inverse, if somebody else finds an inverse, it'll be the exact same matrix. There's not two or three different inverses. So given this matrix A, find A inverse. 
So what I'm saying is you know the answer. We just looked at it in the last example, but now I want you to compute A inverse. So step one, we're going to create a matrix with A, and then the identity, the two by two identity. So it's a little bit strange. Your matrix is wider than you're used to. Most of the matrices we looked at would be maybe just two columns or three columns, but this one has got a lot more columns than rows. All right, I will help you with the first row operation. So just like before, all you need to focus on is one column at a time. There's only two columns, so there's not that much going on. What's a good first move that lets me turn one of these numbers and do a one? So let's use that two and not turn the three to a zero, but turn it into a one. So we're going to subtract row two uh, back to row one. So we have one. Now, <clears throat> you have to do this with every entry. So we have minus a one plus one is zero. And now zero plus one is one. Now minus one plus zero is minus one. So how do we knock out the two that's in column one? So we're going to subtract. How many row ones do I want to subtract? Minus two row one. So go ahead and do this operation. This should be the last operation you need to do. So the matrix you're looking at, <clears throat> on the left, we have the identity. That's what we wanted, the two by two identity. What we have on the right side is another two by two matrix, and it's the, the uh, inverse of our original matrix A. And we already checked before that this A inverse actually is the inverse. It gives us the identity when we multiply. So we'll do one more practice problem for uh, finding inverses. So we'll do a three by three this time. Two, one, minus one. Minus one, two, four. One, minus two, minus three. All right, step one is always the same. So we're going to create this wide matrix where it has A, and then we're going to uh, put the identity. In this case, we have a three by three matrix, so I need the three by three identity matrix in here. Now we'll write that out. So let's avoid fractions as long as possible. What would be a good first move? So we're, of course, you can do any column you want first. I just generally like the left column and work left to right. So if we go left column first, 
What would be a reasonable first move? Subtract two, row three, and store to row one. So I can, no two, row three. So I can use this one at the bottom just one row and clear out everything else in column one pretty easily. So let's go ahead and make that move. So I need minus two, row three, and plus one, row three. So that will use that one and knock out the minus one and the two. It'll cause every other entry to change in the other columns. That's OK. It becomes zero, though, at the top left. Yep, that's fine. So perform these two operations here. And this is one of the last times that I'll do row operations for you. We've done a lot of row operations so far. So if you still have questions, make sure you ask them now. So any questions on that result right there? So column one's almost done. What's the last thing I have to do so column one looks nice? So I got two zeros and a one, but I don't have them in the right spot. I want the one at the top. So we're going to make one swap here. Uh, we're going to swap row three and row one. So do that. Make sure you all the entries get swapped. So here's a move that I don't want to make, which is multiply row 3 by 1 fifth. So I can turn the 5s into a 1. That works great for those two, but it's going to give me fractions over here. So let's avoid that move for now. We may have to hit use fractions, but let's delay as long as possible. How can I, let's see, let's just go right into column 3. What? Entry in column three should I use to get rid of the other entries? Oh, we already got a one right there. So we're just going to use that one and knock out everything else in column three. So how do I do that? Add three row two, three row one. So we get plus three row two. That will take out the uh, negative three. Now down at the bottom, that five, that's a minus five row two. So these two moves should clear out column three. And then, then we'll deal with column two. So questions on that operation? So we can do a swap before we get into fraction land. So let's go ahead and put that one 
in the bottom position. So we're going to go make that swap. And then we'll deal with column two. It'll get a little ugly when we do the next operation. All right, at this point, we have really have no choice. We do have to multiply by one fifth. We delayed as long as possible. I'm going to multiply by a fifth. The good news is there's only one real row operation that we have to make here. This row operation will finish our, will get us the identity on the left side. So what row operation do I need to perform? So we got column one, column three done. We're just finishing off column two. How do I get rid of that negative two? Plus two row two. So go ahead and do that. You're going to have fractions over here on the right side. They shouldn't be too bad. So go ahead and do this operation. Remember, the only way to make fractions suck any less is common denominators. That's pretty much the only way you can add. So go ahead and use common denominators, unless you're a fraction genius, which I definitely am not. All right, what we're looking at here, on the left side, we have the identity. Well, on the right side, what we have is the inverse. So there is A inverse. So A inverse equals this 3 by 3 matrix. 2 fifths, 1, 6 fifths, 1 fifth, negative 1, negative 7 fifths, 0, 1, 1. Now for in-class quizzes and uh, final exams, I'll try to pick a matrix that has a good inverse without fractions. Your take-home quiz is a different story because you have as much time as you want on that one. So this would be a reasonable question for your take home uh, quiz. So let's check this and see, is this actually the inverse of the matrix A? So we're going to multiply A times A inverse. So our original matrix A should have been 2, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2, 4. 1 minus 2 minus 3. I'm going to check, double check. And another note, anytime you're writing out matrices, you mess up one sign or one number, and everything will be incorrect. So if I write minus 1 when it should have been a plus 1, I'll be finding the inverse of some other matrix. So make sure that you double check, especially the first time you write it down. That's the most common, uh, the most common miswriting is the first time you copy it down. All right, so I'm just going to check one time. Did I really do this right? Another fast way to check, I, I usually write them in rows, so I generally check them in columns instead of checking the rows. So our first column is 2, 1, negative 1, or 2, negative 1, 1. Got it. Uh, 1, 2, negative 2. 
Got it. Negative 1, 4, negative 3. All right, so we got A down. Now A inverse is right there. And we're multiplying, so we're going across and then down. So we now have three rows and three columns. So I will do the first entry, 2 times 2 fifths plus 1 times 1 fifth minus 1 times 0. That's the upper left entry. This matrix is going to be uh, quite wide. It might be a good time to put a grid out here because there's going to be quite these entries are going to be really wide. So we'll go. It doesn't matter what order you go. You could get either the uh, second entry in the first column or the second entry in the first row next. It doesn't matter which one you fill in. I'll just go across the row. So I'm filling in row one, column two. So this is a good time if you have a second or third pen or highlighter to cover up on your paper. Uh, you can use a highlighter to basically, oops, that's not nearly wide enough. So you can use a highlighter to, I don't mean draw on it, but you can kind of cross it out by putting a pen over top of it. If you scribble out on your paper, you're not going to, you're going to have problems when you come back and erase. But you can literally put your pen or your finger on top of rows and columns to keep things straight. Oh. So we got 2 times 1 is 2 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1 minus 1 times 1. Now moving to the last column, first row. 2 times 6 fifths plus 1 times negative 7 fifths minus 1 times 1. All right, I want you to finish off row two, row three, and compute those.
Any questions on these multiplications? I know for, we had a lot of fists hanging around. It's annoying. I'll try to keep fractions out of your uh, in-class midterm and or final exam and quiz. But certainly on some homeworks, you'll have definitely some fractions. Probably on your take-home quiz, I may put some fractions on there as well. So these operations, they're not difficult unless you haven't done them enough. So they're complicated, but not really difficult. There's a lot of steps you have to keep track of. But you practice enough, and they're very routine. So any last questions before you go? So we have class tomorrow and Wednesday.